getting in there. For those of you that are just added, uh, chat's in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, you can uh, go in there and just maybe tell us what you teach, uh, where you're at, teaching online, face-to-face, -face, or the, the looming uh, option of synchronous online, which I'm guessing that's why you're here. Um, so I, uh, I'm just going to probably just jump right into it with uh, some of my experiences, some best practices that I've learned some hard way <laughs> before. Um, there's many other things. I don't have a lot of notes. And then if we do have time, uh, maybe even we'll try a couple of these things uh, as a group, just so you can kind of experience them if you have not done so before. Um, so again, I'm Dan Petrock, uh, math professor, faculty liaison to distance learning. Um, I've taught online since about 05, um, but also done synchronous online. Uh, we used to call it just web blended with a synchronous component, which was met on Blackboard. We did this primarily for our developmental math class, uh, Math 064, which is a new class we started in 2012. It was a course designed to help our, our most struggling math students get through developmental mathematics course uh, to prepare them for a quantitative reasoning course or statistics, which is our Math 110 or statistics. Uh, that really drove us to think more intentionally about how to be very uh, active in their learning. The curriculum we chose uh, made the students work in small groups. It was social constructivist learning theory. And when we went online, we wanted to not lose that. We wanted them to still interact around the content, to struggle with it, to them doing the math instead of the teacher. Um, so we did that. And um, we've had four or five different faculty teach the course synchronous online over the years. Uh, and we've all learned some things about it. And now that many of you um, might be thinking of the same uh, delivery method, I thought, well, this would be you can learn from a lot of my mistakes and some best practices. Kayleen gave a great synopsis of not only just good online teaching, design, just, uh, just I don't care what you're learning, um, and then how to leverage technology, leverage the LMS and other software to optimize that learning. So when you are together face-to-face, -face, you're, you're working on the tough stuff, right? You're working on the uh, exploring, constructing, you're interacting with other humans, you're interacting with the, the content. Um, and so the time that you have with students is extremely precious. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the next slide. And uh, I entitled this, Does Create a Culture of Active Learning? Um, I always graded attendance for my synchronous online classes. And um, I see some people are chatting in what they teach. Keep doing that. And then if you have questions, uh, go do that too. Um, Kate will curate those and flag me if I should answer something. Um, so I used to I grade it. I even put up the last bullet here. I don't know if you can see that. The um, I called it the daily five. Did they attend? Did they show up on time? Did they stay the whole time? I know that's crazy. Um, and were they active in their learning, right? Three points. And then I gave two points for what was kind of required before class started. So to piggyback off what Kayleen was saying, maybe, uh, maybe a flipped learning model. They had to uh, watch a video and do a little quiz, or they had to submit homework, or whatever it was. Um, so then I just had essentially five points a day. Uh, three of those points were what they did in class, and two of those points uh, were either a quiz I'd give them at the beginning of class or as a homework assignment they had to do before. And you can play with this however you want, uh, but do make it, uh, you know, people don't do optional, so put a grade on it. It's important that they're there, and um, and they'll, they'll respect that. Uh, I what initially is as like for instance some of you are just coming in right now my my practice would be as students come in I usually get on 15 minutes early some students are always early right you get in there you say hi they turn their webcam they turn their audio you have a little conversation how are things going blah 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 my my process and I would suggest is that you talk to every student when they come in um, don't let them just like we're doing now it the camera mics off just hang out whatever inactive uh, passive learning right. Uh, don't do that. Um, force them to engage with you at least one-on-one -on -one right when they come in. Um, they'll, at first, they'll be reluctant. Uh, they might be a little whiny. <laughs> but very quickly, within a few weeks, they realize, oh, I, I'm not going to hide in this class. I have to engage. In fact, what you're going to do is once you get them uh, everything working, and usually the first class, it takes about 20 minutes to get everybody 
up and going. But as soon as I have three, four, five students ready to go, I just say, hey, I'm going to put you five in a breakout room right now. And here's the activity I'd like you to do. Um, uh, do go to this page in your book, and then I'll even upload that page on uh, the breakout session. And I need you to interact in this exploratory thing. Or I want you to go over this problem. Or here's the, the quiz I want you to do. And you can all work together. I'm not grading for uh, how well you do. I'm just grading for completion. Get them doing something so they know as soon as they show up, it's not just a waste of time waiting around for somebody else. Okay? And then we get four or five more. Throw them in another breakout. Four or five more. Throw them in a breakout. So then once you've got them in breakouts, they have ownership of those breakouts. And if there's only three, four, or five of them, they are, they're, um, well, they're forced to engage with each other. Plus, you're not there, so they're a little more uh, comfortable. Uh, you have the ability to float from room to room and check on them. Um, and as they complete, like if you get the activity done early because you were here early, that's great. Um, uh, carry on as you will or work on your homework or whatever. Um, but once I've kind of got everybody in and oriented, said hi to everyone, and then uh, a lot of times I will uh, bring them back into the large group. Uh, have a general conversation about what we just did, observations I made, uh, things that I had to jump in or didn't jump in about. Uh, or I'll ask a stu student, say, hey, you were doing this and you said this. Can you tell everybody about that? Because it was kind of lurking, I call it creeping, <laughs> listening to them. Uh, breakout room, a number, I, I think you want four. Say around four or five is good. You want them to have to engage with each other, right? Uh, you can do just two people if you want, three people, four people, um, but you want to keep it small enough so they're, uh, they get to, and what's, what I kind of like about that, they're most of the time in a different group every time, so they're getting to know everybody, a little different dynamic. Um, it's it's great, um, and you can move them around wherever you want to. Uh, yep, we'll uh, we'll actually uh, show, I'm going I'm going to show that. Um, I'll, uh, I'll try to do that. Um, so if you go into any break, any, any uh, collaborate session this is an option so and it will automatically do it too so um, so I'm just a big proponent of using the breakout rooms to get them active get them engaged with content in each other uh, making sure they have uh, microphone and, and video working if they don't have video working um, or they'll claim they don't have video working uh, or their audio then you know then you gotta have to tell them call in they, they learn how to do that there's options uh, so they can call in on their phones, um, and uh, but most of the time, once they kind of re realize this is the way the class is going to go, they they um, they figure it out. Uh, again, I'm working with developmental math students. These are our lowest students uh, at DMAC probably, and um, they figure it out, and they do great. And um, I used to schedule it during um, nap time for their kids usually, and a lot of times I'd have they'd have kids on their laps, and that's just part of the reality of it. Um, you're going to be going into their houses. Um, you're going to see some things you do not want to see. You're going to be seeing things uh, about their household situation that will sadden you. Uh, you'll be seeing other family members constantly interrupting them. You'll see students not wearing appropriate clothing. I would articulate those things in your syllabus. I would put those in there and say, wear clothes like you go to campus. Uh, do your best to find a quiet spot. Please mute your microphone when you're not talking. Um, all of those things, and, and they'll, they'll figure it out. Yep, there is a, uh, a video on phone option. Yes, I believe so, yeah, through the app, the Blackboard Collaborate app will allow that. The problem is if you use your phone in the app, anything you put on the screen is going to be super tiny. It's going to be hard for them to read. So um, if they don't have a computer to take the class, uh, they shouldn't take the class um, because it's going to be any content you put on the screen is going to be super tiny, uh, especially like if, like I'm going to, kind of talk about different ways to present your learning uh, PowerPoints or whatever. So but those are good um, good things to know. Um, we, we know we have students who are trying to take entire online classes just with their smartphones. And um, well, hopefully we have enough cautions in there. Um, that, that's probably not the best idea. Some things can be consumed well that way and other things can't. Um, but if they're going to be active learning, they're going to be asked to participate. Maybe even they're going to be asked to write on the screen, fill out something, do something collaboratively. They need to be on a computer, um, and they need high-speed internet. Uh, so those those should be uh, stated up front in the in the course descriptions. All right. Good questions.
Um, yep, I dial the phone. Online syllabus template. Um, it's. I don't think it's any different than our normal template. Um, we have some people that have some best practices that you could probably glean from as far as stating all of these things. Um, I'd be glad to share things I put. Um, other people have got theirs. I think probably our speech department might be a really good resource since I think they deliver a lot of courses this way, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe someone else can help me with that. Um, I haven't taught this particular course in a couple years. I think 2018 is the last time I did it. Um, so it's a, it's, it hasn't been in my wheelhouse as much as it used to be, but um, I still assist. I know Honors is doing stuff like this. Um, I know um, I know Kevin does mortuary science. He does online meetings with this a lot of people. Uh, obviously, it's the same system you can use for online office hours, which is kind of an animal. Um, and you're you're more responding to student questions, uh, dealing with what they want to deal with instead of you kind of guiding uh, the act of learning. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next slide here. Uh, large group instruction. So once you kind of yank them out of their small groups, I suggest the large group. Go ahead and mute everybody's microphone and camera or ask them to. You have the ability to do it as well as a moderator. Tell them you raise their hand if they'd like to say something. Uh, so you're going to be kind of driving the boat here. It's going to be more passive. Uh, you can ask them to chat things in or you can, there's a poll you can put things out. Ask a poll how they felt about some of them. Uh, is that making sense? Blah, blah, blah. So use some of those tools in that area, I would say. Um, and then I, I, this is when you have to be kind of careful. If you're used to like, oh, I'm used to having four hours of lecture a week. Four hours of lecture in a synchronous online session will be less efficient, right? There's just, it's just going to be harder for you to cover the same content, especially if you're doing active learning. You just want to sit there and blast lectures. Great, I covered everything, but I'm not sure how much was learned, right? So what I would suggest is a kind of piggybacking off what, what Kaylin's be intentional. Uh, pick topics that you know are most difficult. Pick higher level Bloom's taxonomy activities to do when they're together. Uh, pick things that you lean on software, lean on interactive learning objects, lean on Blackboard uh, to do the lower level thinking, the passive, more passive learning, the things that can be used separate from you. When they're with you and with the other students, pick the tough stuff. Uh, they will find value in that because then when they're away from you and they're doing the the, the lower level Bloom's taxonomy tasks, they'll be they'll be more successful. They can still contact you, right? Uh, but I, I would be be intentional about what you're going to do together. Uh, pick the the biggest concepts and the toughest stuff, and do those things. You because you only got so much time. Uh, I don't care if this you're doing singers online or in a face to face class. Um, uh, yeah, so. What I would suggest, like we've, uh, like the Matho 64 course, right? We've got, it's kind of built like an online class, right? It's got a similar learning path, but it's based on uh, an understanding that you would have a synchronous session, like, every, so each folder was a synchronous session. That's, that also can be, and I'll just go to the next slide, that's where you could actually host the video of your live class. Now, students will miss, right? They miss class. And then how do they, quote unquote, make it up. Now, some of you would be like, I'm not making it up. Well, like Kayleen said, I love Kayleen said it. She said, just record it. Uh, make sure you set up a session for download. And then I would upload the recording into Kaltura, post that video in a discussion, and then ask the students to do the activities you had everybody do during the sessions. Like we looked at these pages. We responded to this. I want you to talk about this. I want you to watch, you know, whatever that was. And then they can potentially make up the points, right? Or they can't make up the points. It's kind of up to you because um, there's value in coming to class and interacting with your classmates and that should that should be rewarded. Um, my experience is students who skip class, skip the discussion board too. So you'll be like, what a complete waste of time. Maybe, but you might actually have your really good students who will go back and watch that video and not respond to the discussion board, but they're just curious about something you said or you talked about. Um, and the recording will only record the main room. It will not record the breakout rooms. So when you do a breakout room, it's okay to leave a few students in the main room if you want that recorded. And you might want to tell them, hey, uh, remember this is being recorded. When you're having your discussion around this topic, it's going to be in the recording. So just so they know. Um, 
if you don't need breakout room, because it's nice to hear the discussion between students sometimes and other students will be like, oh yeah, that's what I thought too, and that didn't make sense. Oh, they said it that way, that makes it right. So they're getting somewhat of that experience uh, looking over the shoulder like you were. Um, so you have to make a determination. Otherwise, you just throw everybody in your breakout. The recording keeps going, but it'll be a recording of nothing. Um, you can always hang out in the main room and leave the students alone, especially at the beginning. If I've got everybody in the breakout room, um, I want to stay in the main room in case somebody shows up, right? And so I can welcome them. Um, but then, at some point, then you can always see the list, and I'm like, oh, somebody just showed up. Uh, a lot of times I'll leave something in the chat. Hey, if I'm not here for some reason, uh, call me or <laughs> raise your hand or something so it notifies me because I might be talking to another breakout room and I don't see them in there. Um, so they they learn it take like I said it takes a couple weeks and everybody seems to be flowing pretty good. The recording will stop when everyone leaves the main room whether that's leaving. Okay, so that's why it's good to leave somebody in the main room, right? So it stays going or else you have to hit the record button again. Is that correct, Eileen? Yep. Otherwise, just to, just to be aware that yeah, they would after they bring everybody back from the breakout groups, which is fine. Like maybe you don't want one of those discussions recorded. Right. Um, then you know after everybody comes back, you'll need to remember to start that recording again. Yep. So that's a little tricky thing. Um, so maybe it's just best to keep it keep a group in the main room. Uh, as far as they're concerned, it just acts like another breakout room. So. Um, but those initial discussions, you know, a lot of times I'll I'll get everybody in that breakout room and then I'll go float and like, like the first group. Hey, how's it going? Did you do this? Yeah, yeah, we're done, blah, blah. And then like, we're just chatting about whatever, right? That's awesome. That means they're, that's cool. They're being connected socially, they're getting to know each other. Uh, they actually start to care about each other. Um, they, it, it creates, it creates a, a, a really good culture for your classroom too. And they feel like they're supporting each other. Uh, and they're in it together, especially developmental students, um, the traditional methods have not worked, right? So it's good to have something that's different. Uh, and if they haven't had an active learning experience, then that's what would be different. <laughs> so um, yeah, so there, there's some great tools there. Um, I think I've got, I covered these two things. What do I have on this on the side? Oh, um, other ideas for the Blackboard Collaborate, obviously office hours, or you can use it for test proctoring, it's not great. Uh, obviously, they it doesn't lock down a browser, but you can actually see them. They can you can do a little test security. Uh, I've done it for one-offs for students that couldn't come to campus, uh, that are in another state or their military base or they another college they're by whatever. It seems like I always had one or two that I would end up using Collaborate for to do that. Uh, obviously, had an office hour this morning. Was it again? I don't know. I just have students to ask me when they want it. I post it and they show up. Um, one cool thing that that I would recommend, especially for like people who want to like present like their notes and stuff to people if they're doing that little mini lecture or they want to go over a problem, you can actually share your screen. Uh, if you've got a, a document camera, you can write under that camera, or if you've got your ability for a tablet on one note, uh, you can split screen between the actual like Blackboard content or LMS, whatever uh, homework problem, and your written out thing. Uh, you can play around with a lot of those kind of features and it, and it feels a lot like what you would do in class, right? And so that's what I'm saying. Try to stimulate the good stuff you do face to face, right? Pick the good stuff that's great and and start doing it. Start small, right? Do the basic stuff. And then as your skills and your comfort level goes up, then try new things. Um, your students will be very patient with you because you'll be very patient with them. And they will understand that uh, it, they're, you're learning with them. And they actually kind of like that. If you're the kind of person who who rolls in there like I'm I'm the know-it-all, students hate that, um, and it doesn't play well, especially when you don't, and there's a lot to learn, and you're trying to teach them. Uh, this is this is a, a process of learning, and so am I. Right? That's a you kind of check your ego at the door. Everybody's in this together, and you're that guide in the side. Then, right? So, um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, Yep, Blackboard, Blackboard Fabric Ultra, yep, and I would suggest creating sessions for each of your classes. Um, they will find those, but I would also post those, uh, maybe those links in your course content. Like what I would do is suggest uh, maybe like for a week or if it's twice a week or for each live session, however you want, and this is where it would be good to work with a designer to find some things that might work for you. 
so they can go, oh, here's here's today's date. Here's the week I'm working on. I go in there. Oh, there's the link to my live session. I don't have to go dig around tools. I don't need to go find stuff. It's right there at the top. I know. I show up. I click here, and I'm in. And that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can also blast it out through announcements as well or email. Um, you know, redundant is good. Yep. Um, let's see here. Oh, so there's a million ideas and best practices. I've blasted a whole bunch in the last essentially 20 minutes of things that I try to do that I've learned, uh, good, bad, and ugly. Um, I know some of you have used this, uh, and I, I want to solicit if anybody has something burning like, oh, no, do this or whatever, uh, go ahead and, and do that. And what I'd like to do is actually model some of this uh, if we have time now. So, But if anybody's got something pressing they'd like to share with the group or Kayleen, something I missed, or Kate, please please do so. So I have one main room link. So Tiffany, that's that's great. Um, it makes it a little more difficult for you to record and catalog your recordings because it's nice when you can name each session and students know which session is the one they're going into for which each day. Um, but yeah, generic that generic main course link is fine. Um, uh, so if you just kind of want to have an open room, right, all the time. Um, but if it's like a synchronous online where you've got a dedicated, we're doing this for this and this for this and this for this, it might be easier for just create. Uh, you can even create recurring sessions. Uh, it's got the, the scheduler on that, um, just to help you keep you and your your recording straight. And which you can even put like what sections you were covering that day. Uh, so then when you download it and put the MP4 into Blackboard, it's it makes it a little easier, I think. Yep, very good. Yep, just put the date and session name. That's awesome. Yep. Um, yep, time zones. Yep. The other thing, too, um, depending on what your goal is, like if you're doing office hours or whatever the case might be, sometimes just using the main room itself is easier than trying to create individual sessions. Um, yep. When I've done collaborate training, that's kind of the one that I push for. Just sometimes students click on the main room versus clicking into the session and then now you're in two different places. Um, the way I describe it is like the main room is like entering the lobby of a business center. You can do anything you want in the lobby, right? You could meet and have a meeting there if you wanted to. And then the sessions are like little breaked out, broken out rooms with the door shut. If somebody's in a room with the door shut, you don't know they're in there. You're in two different spots if you're in the main room and they're in the you know, business meeting room with the door shut. If that makes sense. Yeah, Kate's, Kate's right. The <clears throat> the other thing to, to point out about that is the the link for your that if you particularly if you're inviting students from other sections into the same classroom and it's not just the students in your current course that you're in. Um, so, you know, if you teach three sections of the same course and you're going to invite them all to the same session, then you're going to be using the guest link. Uh, the guest link for your course room does not change. But every time you make a session using that create session button, each session has a different link. So if you have a different different link every week or every session or every class period, that's a lot to keep track of. And there's more room for error. So you might copy and paste the wrong link or student might have overlooked the email from today with the link or the announcement from today and they clicked on an old one and they couldn't get in. So there's just less opportunity for error if you always use the same course room. Do you, is the, are the recordings uh, chopped up by date then? They're all yeah, they're always by date, and then so the the title of the room. So but those can be renamed as well. Yeah, it, it you can doesn't matter. Those. Yeah, you can rename them afterwards. Yeah. Um, so that so that might be like Tiffany. That might be a problem, especially. Yeah, especially if you're not organizing your course content around the live sessions. So that's where it was easier for me to do the scheduled ones because I would put the course, I would put the link to that session within each week's folder, right? Um, so, but that's a little extra work probably that you wouldn't need to deal with. So, um, yeah, I think that'd be that'd be fine to just 
have them go here. Just, and you can put a link to this anywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, what you would want to do is, if you're planning on copying your course and reusing it from semester to semester, you don't want to make individual sessions and then put those guest links everywhere because those are not going to be the same when you copy the course. You're right. going to have to make new sessions and you're going to have to um, yep, yep. replace all of those links everywhere. So I would instead do what Dan's doing now and create that link to the Blackboard Collaborate room area like the, so that it takes them to instead of going to tools blackboard collaborate ultra you know you can put that link and then it saves them from going to tools and blackboard that just takes them right to the collaborate area and then they can click on course room or they can click on the individual session um, yeah there's, there's just less work later on for you that way um, the one advantage yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to break it right now Oh no, you can you can have multiple collaborates open. I mean, you can I'm be trying to break my internet. <laughs> uh, the one advantage of scheduling a session that does have an end time is if you do use the attendance tool in Blackboard, um, right. you can um, if if you're using a session that does have an end date, you can select the option to have the attendance from that session go into your attendance area in your grade center. So that's the that's the one main advantage of scheduling them out. Yeah, Marsha, it's new. It's as of um, what what day is it? Tuesday, yesterday or Friday? I don't remember. The days are the days are together. Is this day fifty four or two? <laughs> <laughs> um, can you repeat how you can do that again for me, please? I'm sorry, I didn't catch yeah, the whole. Yeah, so um, of how you do it. Dan, can you go? Click, can you click on that class session that you have there? Actually, nope. Here, I'll just do this. Yeah, that one. Do that, do nope, that, that class yep. right there. Right the one, the session that you created down below. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. To see and the then in that panel on the right, if you scroll down, you got to scroll then the other scroll. So that attendance reporting. That's where Holy you. Holy cow! Can look. Okay. Yeah, so, and if you click yeah, that share attendance with the LMS. Settings. Yeah, I think it must have been Friday or something last week that that I had I worked with Joe to get those switched. So I think Amanda was working on help updating the help guide. She might have already gotten that done. Um, I was just doing it manually by the chat, you know, like when they because I always require yeah, people to, okay. to like yeah. say hi and bye basically. And then right. if everybody so did that, then I knew they were there. Yeah, here's another pro tip um, that view reports. So where Dan just clicked, See and then view right, reports. Right, I'm sorry. Um, this, little, this thing right here. Yeah. View reports. So and if you if you had a re, if you had a past session, or if you had um, if you're just using the course room for everything, you can go to that view reports, and then uh, get the attendance in oh, and I out. Didn't, I didn't, I didn't well, all minor. My all mine are in sessions and they have end dates. Uh, so since so we, yeah. So if you go yeah. to yeah. So if, so from where Dan was back at the rec the main collaborate area. Oh, okay, um, you want to go back there? Sorry. So by default, it's going to show you all upcoming sessions when you go to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. But if you switch Correct. that filter yes, it does. to past sessions, yeah, right there mm -hmm. or previous, um, then it'll show you your past rooms that you had. And then you can click on the view reports and, and get that information. Fabulous. Thank you. So that's the, that's a better in and out and total time and number of joins and that kind of fun stuff. So you don't have to monitor the, the list as people are coming in and out or something. Well, I'm just going to hit the breakout room and then I'm going to take you all out. Can you, I know this is annoying, but look just to the far right. Just look to the far right. <laughs> um, you see where it says breakout rooms here? And you can actually designate how many rooms do you want. Uh, do you want a random or custom, uh, allowing switching, and then it will break out. This is what the breakout would look like if I hit start, right? Um, and so you can play around with that, uh, and that's kind of how it is done. So, but. I know it's two o'clock, so I'm just going to cancel and I'm going to hit stop sharing.
Yep, sorry, I just messed with you, so. <laughs> uh, and I'm willing to stick around if anybody wants to just have follow-up questions, wants to demo things, uh, just stick around if anybody else, if you wanted. Uh, thanks for attending today. Uh, thanks for letting us have an opportunity to, to do this. It, it, it takes, there's a learning curve. Uh, it mostly, it's just like your students, the best way to learn is by doing it. So practice, do it, find some colleagues or your family and just set up collaborate sessions and try to break it, um, try to do stuff. Uh, and then obviously reach out to distance learning and we'll, we can set up one-on-ones with you as well. You can also join from multiple devices. So you can send that guest link to yourself if you have a spare old computer or your smartphone. If you want to see it, what it looks like from the participant's perspective, you can use that guest link on a different device or in a different browser. Sometimes I do that to make sure my audio is working. Yeah, so Jay wants to uh, look at a breakout. So I will. Um, as soon as we kind of see who wants to to do that and stick around, I'll just do it. Um, Thanks, Dan. That's a nice feature. I like that. Cool. Yeah, I know there are some other systems that have breakout rooms, and they're they're great. Um, but the good thing is, well, we can support this one. So, <laughs> oh, you're already doing it. Somebody's doing it. So I'm in the main room. It looks like. See where everybody else is at. So Jay and James are in their own breakout, uh, and the rest of us are in the main room still. So thank you for doing that. Whoever did that was that like Kate. Um, and then so we can have our little conversation, or we can turn their camera microphone on. Uh, we can upload. Uh, you can give privileges to people to do more stuff. Like I could give uh, Christina. I wonder if I could do that from right here. Participant list. Uh, where's she at? Yeah, I could make her a moderator even if I wanted. Um, if uh, I wanted her to present something to her small group or whatever. A lot of times you can like click and drag. Like I'm gonna go ahead and drop myself into group two. So. Uh, our group one here, I'll go with Jay and James and answer their questions. You guys can hang out in here, okay? Yeah, you're still in the main room, so it, it looks the same, except I'm not in there, so I'm going to go. And I'll hit update. No, well, maybe I can't. Maybe I've been demoted. Maybe since I didn't start the breakout, I can't move myself. Can't update. Maybe it's, nope. I think whoever started, I think, has to do the moving. So, did you do it, Kate? Yes, I did. Does that mean I have the power? You have the power to to put me wherever you want. Put me in my place, Kate. <laughs> All these months, I've been waiting. So I, I. I uh, I'll be back. Okay, now I'm in the main room. Oh, and uh, just kind of insider tip, if anybody's curious, the reason why Marsha didn't move the first time, you have to hit update every time you move people around. I didn't hit update, and so she didn't move. Well, everybody left us to go to other rooms, but any questions that you guys have that are still in here, Michelle, Niall, Christina? Or do you guys want to be put into one of the other rooms so you can see what it looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to share my screen with you really quick. Hold on one second.
All right, so ignore the terrifying window of doom. I'm going to just size this down so it's not so scary. Since I'm sharing a screen of a screen, it does this like matrix style thing. So I'm just going to size it down so you can't see it anymore. But from your little tab over on the corner here where the chat, participants list, and then there's this share content. This is where you would normally go to um, put in a PowerPoint or some kind of file you wish to share with your, your class. And then if you come down to breakout rooms, mine looks a little bit different because there's actually people in the breakout rooms right now. Ordinarily, um, everyone would be listed in the main room. And you can see Dan, James, and Jay are all in group one. Kayleen, Kevin, and Marsha are all in group two. So if you guys wanted, I could put you into different groups. I could add more. Um, ordinarily, I also have the option to um, randomly assign or manually assign. In this case, I did a manual assignment since there were some requests for two individuals to be put in the same group together. Um, but even if it was a random assignment and let's say it randomly assigned everyone who or these three users into group one, and I know that Dan and James don't work well together, so I want to move Dan out. Even if it was a random assignment, I could still just click and drag Dan and put him wherever I wanted to. He's so meaty, huh? Okay, perfect. Let me move Dan back. By the way, Dan was a moderator, so he could have moved himself back. <laughs> He's just needy, and he just wants everybody to take care of him. <laughs> hey, thanks. Hey, they had a great question. Um, like, Niall and Marsha have this nice little profile picture of themselves, right? How do you get that in there? Uh, if you click on your My Status and Settings at the bottom, okay. I believe it's in there. Oh, let's see here. You just put the finger, your like finger over the little circle, and then it gives you edit feature. Yep, got it, and got then it. you can pick. Because yep. um, they were or talking about how if you got super limited bandwidth and you can't have a lot of video running, they would love to be able to have. They could shut their camera off, but at least you have that little picture there. And like, it is helpful, especially yeah. uh, with the students. Then, like if they talk, then their microphone comes on, and the, you see the picture of the student. So, I mean, I have like 35 to 40 students, so it's kind of nice to see who's talking or whatever. So, yep. Here, I got a, here, I'll put this one up for myself. Very excited to see where this is going. Boom. Boom. Oh, that is a good one. Nice one. I look happy. Even if I'm not, I look happy. How could you not be happy? You're getting to spend all your time with your beautiful family. Um, I'm happy. I don't think they are. <laughs> I get pet rock all the time. Um, so, so my students actually taught me that, and they're the ones that asked me, like, "Oh, put one of your family in." So that's why I picked up the one I did because we all were like, uh, like. I don't know, it was just a, a place to connect. And so it was really fun. Like some people had a picture of them and their dog or whatever. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was fun. <laughs> That's how I did hey, it, so. Hey, Kate, throw me back in uh, group one again and I'll tell those guys that. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Hey Marsha, I don't think you were in here earlier, but just in case you were curious at all, um, I figured out what happened, why you didn't move that first time. Um, okay. Kind of insider tip, if you're trying to do this with your own students, mm -hmm. when you move um, individuals into, like if you go back into the breakout groups and then drag somebody into one of the rooms, you have to click update. Oh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hello the share now button. I've done that before where I'll drag a file and I'll click on it and bang my head into a wall trying to figure out why it won't pop up to share because you have to hit share now. Same thing here, you have to hit update. Gotcha. I have a question for you guys. Um, so like, and I know this is not a, but this is from other experiences. 
with Zoom, um, you know, how you can kind of put uh, your microphone on um, mute and then you just hit the space bar to like unmute it for a second and then you can just release the space bar. Does Collaborate do anything like that or is it just mostly tapping on the mic, you know, below uh, off and on? Like any ideas or anybody experienced that at all? So you mean like, go ahead, Kaylee. Chime in with whatever yeah. you're gonna Yeah, I don't think there's any other shortcut. I think. Yeah. There's... Okay. Okay. Just curious. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, I don't think there is either. I was really hoping you were gonna chime in with some magical fix. It's like, oh wait, no, let her talk. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions, or does any anybody who didn't get moved to another room want to try it out at all? One other question about the chat. Um, I noticed, so you're going to be able to see the chat, even though you have like, let's say, five different rooms, everyone's going to be able to see the chat, or do you guys have any experience with that? Like, let, tell me a little bit about that. Sorry, I was talking with my mic muted. Um, so do you mean like who can see the chat, or? Yeah, I just um, noticed before um so when i was in the chat in the breakout room i guess i could see that there was chats going on but i couldn't when i hit the chat icon i couldn't see the chats until i got back into the main room i just didn't know if that's like yeah let me show you um i think okay. this might be easier one to show versus um there's a you have to select which chat you want to view so um let me show you here. All right, I'm going to size down that crazy infinite display. Okay, can you see where I now have my share content? Yep. Okay, so when I go to my chat, it'll give me the option to view everyone. So you could probably see everyone's chat through. You were probably defaulted into whatever. Um, breakout group you were put into. So if you were in breakout group two, I think you were in, um, you would have only seen the defaulted to see the chats that breakout two was having. You could okay. go back to that little arrow and switch back to everyone if you wanted to see what was happening in the main group. Yes, I have used that feature before in like um, our staff meetings. But my question is, I guess, for the students, like let's say they were all in their groups, um, could I go in the main place and do a chat and everybody see it then? Because I noticed there's the balloons going up when the yeah. chat balloons were going up yeah. when I was in the breakout room. Okay. Yep. So if they're in the breakout rooms and you say something in what I'm, I'm saying breakout room and main room. Hopefully you're following my what I mean by that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's what I'm thinking of. They're like, yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So if you said, all right, I'm putting everybody into breakout rooms and I'm going to give them 10 minutes, but I want to give them the two minute warning that I'm going to bring them back. You can put yeah. two warning and as long as they have that alert set up so under their settings mm -hmm. notification settings they'll want to make sure that they have that uh, pop-up notification um, or excuse me the collaborate pop-up notification I was highlighting the wrong one um, then they'll get that little bubble that'll pop up and it'll say you know Marsha says two minutes and then they'll get that notification awesome okay yep just curious yeah absolutely Stop that. Good question. Any others? Okay. Well, if anybody wants to play with it or anything at any point or, you know, have some test individuals in there, please don't hesitate to ask. We're more than happy to drop in or you can come into one of our rooms and we can play around in there. or We can enter one of your classes. Um, I've even sat in on a couple of classes and just sat quietly in the corner and listened for the first five minutes to make sure that there weren't any issues getting files to pull up or, you know, people to be able to hear. Um, so if you need any help, please feel free to ask. Um, some specific getting started training videos. You, I, Niall, I'm assuming you mean specific to um, like Blackboard Collaborate. 
Okay, perfect. Actually, if you scroll up in the chat, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Kayleen actually put the online resources link up above, and she was kind enough. Ooh. Oh, nice. <laughs> you can turn on your speaker. I can talk to you out loud if you'd like. Um, but she did put in um, the PDF of a help guide and um, a link to where in the online instructional resources you can access this information. There, we have a couple of, um, I believe we did three videos of you know, how to get it started, how to do basic navigation and collaborate. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember what our last one was, Kayleen. It was getting started, basic navigation. And, and sharing content. Oh, yeah. and sharing content. So those are, there are three quick hit ones. Um, otherwise, we'll be doing another series of collaborative trainings starting in May as well. What is group? Is Dan still in the breakout group? Well, probably. Should we bring them back? Oh, maybe jump in there first. There's the PDF for that. And I will go get them. Oh, never mind. She already went. And then, Niall, if you wanted to watch those, vid is video help more helpful or would you prefer something like that PDF? Either or both? Okay, perfect. Um, so if it is helpful for you to kind of watch through the videos, if you go to do this again, just within online instructional resources, so my Blackboard and then your online instructional resources course, and then course content, Within the continuity support folder, we kind of condensed everything to one spot. There's a four instructors. You may also notice that this document, or this, uh, not document, but this folder was dropped into your Blackboard course as well. So that's another spot you can look for it. But if you scroll down just a little bit, there's a whole folder about Collaborate Ultra. If you click on that. So again, that was just online instructional resources, course content. And then um, you can either go through the continuity support folder or it's actually under helpful tools as well. So two different ways to get there. We just have them linked in two spots. And then here's those PDF user guides. So if you have a student that's struggling with it, I know that question came up a little bit as well. If you have some students that are struggling with how to use Collaborate, there's a guide there. There's the instructor guide. And then these were the videos I was referring to that Kayleen was kind enough to record for us. So. Um, this one walks through just how to set it up in session settings, what all those mean. Here's your basic navigation. And then how to share content. So just if you want to put up a PowerPoint or share a Word document or PDF or something like that, there's a couple of just few minute videos. And then we're thinking probably the first couple of weeks of May, I'm going to start another series of Collaborate training, um, basically where we'll just start from the beginning. This is how you set up a session. This is what a course room is. This is how to navigate within Collaborate, so on and so forth. Um, I would be absolutely happy to sign you up, except we haven't picked dates yet. So selfishly, come on, chime on in. When would work for you? We're actually just getting ready to set up our May trainings. Um, so whenever is beneficial, we're trying to figure out what dates would work the best or if we would just do like a reoccurring training opportunity for everyone um, or if we do more of a conference style. But we're going to definitely have a couple of basic collaborate trainings as well before the summer starts. Great. Is there a date or time since you've attended this one and you can kind of have dealer's choice here a little bit? Is there a time that you'd prefer when we're picking times? Okay. Great. 
Well, we'll keep that in mind then. Anytime works for you. Saturday, 7 a.m., huh? Just kidding. I'm not training at 7, 7 a.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> we'll let Kayleen do that one. Pass. <laughs> All right, well, until then, is there anything else, Niall? Actually, I'll um, just take note of your name, too, and I will send you a message when we get those dates and times fixed.